But yeah, bronze match so, first. We have the bronze match is actually an Arcadlari Google Frog acronym. Who are the yeah, I know. Are. That's that's what we thought the finals would be. Mm. Well done, Flipstone, Norm, Scuzzy, and Black Dutchie. You have totally upended our expectations. Good job. And I mean that seriously. Like, total upsets. Well done. Okay, so I'm not sure when this is going to get started. But it looks like we have what we need here, more or less. And yeah, this is the bracket before the bronze match. I. <coughs> yeah. My my voice is going actually. I don't know if you can hear, but uh, I, I don't think I can keep casting. My voice is just suddenly cut out. Oh, seriously? Yeah. I might um hop in after a bit of a rest. And okay. See how it goes. I suppose. Sorry about this. Yep. No worries. All right, so. See you to us for now. We'll hopefully catch up with you later on. Yep. <laughs> nice casting with you. Very fun games. Excellent games. And I expect this one to be just as good. I'm sure it will. Anyway, thanks. Okay. If we don't see you again, thank you for helping out. Okay, so now that Sakdoth has gone out to take a small rest, I'm gonna be, well, waiting for, see, Google Frog is in, Aquanim is, Aquanim is in as well, but not in play. So once we get that going, it will be starting out on, oh, I think it's Trojan Hills. Yeah, Trojan Hills is the first map of the bronze match, so we saw Bandit Plains before. Trojan Hills, of course, is the smaller version of Bandit Plains. That is the one that we're going to be seeing next. And then another game of that. And then after that, we'll have the finals. Well, it'll probably be... This will be a best of... This will be three games, I'm sure. I'm very, very likely even enough that it will be a 2-1. Whoever wins, it'll probably be 2-1. But after that, then we'll have the finals on Ravaged through best of five. Which I don't know what to expect because... List of Norm, Skazi, Black Duchy. I mean, Skazi and Black Duchy definitely pulled in a lot. We can see they're decent at the late game stuff. Well, Flipstep and Norm definitely. I, I'm really curious how they do, because they are going to have to figure out what to do with Skazi and Black Duchy. They probably didn't expect them. And also, probably didn't expect. Well, they expected Google Frog and Aquaman, but it's pretty clear. Skazi and Black Duchy, I'm not sure. They might just go for Black Duchy because of the lower Elo, the same way they did with Aquanim. But Skazi and Black Duchy didn't really seem to have as much of a solid style. It was more a matter of Skazi had building up... Usually built up the heavier stuff, while Black Duchy tended to build the lighter stuff and try to support from there. So that's basically how it went. Anyway, we're going to be moving on to the next round. It's going to be, like I said, the bronze match. And on Trojan Hills... Excuse me, I'm just going to get a small glass of water, so stay tuned. Be back in just a second. Right, I'm back. So we're on to the bronze match. And it's going to be oops. Here. We are. Bronze match, it's going to be between like the Goofer Iconim versus Anakin and Lowry. Actually change that in here. Okay. Bronze match. 
And on Trojan Hills, so we're going to have basically the same thing we had for game two of Google Frog acronym versus... What was it game? No, it was game three. It was the last game of Google Frog acronym versus Flipstip and Norm. That is... This is just the smaller version of that same map, so it would be kind of familiar. No water, though, so it was a bit easier to get around. Spiders are actually considerably more useful in this map. But it's still going to be f pretty much the same. And Lowry and Anarchid set up north. Lowry is going for Anarchid's going for Clogobot Factory. Lowry is not quite choosing yet what they're going for. And Goofrog Acronym have not chosen what to do yet. I'll get to that sooner or later. I should probably turn on get back to bump water. What the heck is going on with the shadows? Sorry, I've Hmm. So anyway, with Anakin and Lowry, Lowry going for Shieldbot Factory, and Google Frog acronym, have they even decided what to go for? They're not even really talking about stuff. They're in. They're choosing their stuff. Okay, there we go. They're probably talking on Skype or not Skype on Mumble. So acronym going for Shieldbot Factory, Google Frog going for Light Vehicles, and like I said, Cloaky and Shield from Anakin and Lowry. And Anarchid and Lowry are going to be... Let's see, Lowry going for a very quick dirtbag scout at the start. Anarchid going for an early gremlin. Wants to go for hidden scouting. I have not seen enough of that this game. Out of this tournament, I should say. Is gremlin scouting. Just throwing a cloaked gremlin into your opponent's base. And seeing everything they're doing without having to worry about them seeing you. Happens fair amount 1v1, but not enough. And didn't have enough this tournament yet. Thank you, Anarchid, for doing that. That is definitely welcome sight. And this typical dart scorcher coming in from Google Frog. Well, Acronym going for a very quick constructor, not even really going for... I mean, there's one bandit, that's about it. And it looks like it might be able to run into this. If Anakin pays attention, they should be able to avoid the interception. And no, they don't! The Gremlin gets intercepted, gets spotted right out. So Google Frog and Acronym well aware that Gremlin scouting is happening. That it is a thing, and actually it's going to get caught up to, though Anakin cleverly pulling that Gremlin out of the way. I mean, at this point, Google Frog's probably going to figure out what's going on, but still. The bandit cannot get to that gremlin, so at least the gremlin can be unpredictable, even if it's completely known. It's known that it exists, but it's not known where. That may make the difference. And the dirtbag here getting completely destroyed by the end with the dart. But at the same time, the players are relatively even, and bandit coming in here, it's kind of screening for the gremlin. Seems like that's the scouting, although, like I said, the gremlin is known. <laughs> yeah, even flipstep. Oh, Anakin doing the gremlin thing again. It's a good thing to do. I mean, it's 150 metal, but it's 150 metal to basically get free information. That is a huge deal, and Anarchid's paying attention to it as well. Like, Anarchid knows what's going on inside Aquanim's base completely. And once again, Aquanim is probably considered the weaker link by Anakin and Lowry. They're probably going to be targeting Aquanim first. Probably just going to try to hold off Google Frog while destroying Aquanim, the same way we saw Norman Flipstep do that because that works really well, or at least it did for them. So Anakin and Lowry probably going to try that same tactic. And Gremlin, unfortunately, has been spotted out. Got a bit careless. Anakin losing that Gremlin. Did see what Aquanim's up to, but did lose the Gremlin in the process. And Google Frog coming in with a few Scorchers. Actually, Anakin out microing Google Frog at the moment from the looks of it. Bandits coming from Lowry as well, just for the same purpose. Well, Anakin moving the Commander forward and over to the center. Once again, we have kind of evening out. Both players are basically kind of sticking to their lines. Google Frog trying to poke in, trying to figure out if there's any entrance, but Anakin and Lowry are not leaving any open. Well, Anakin is... I'll send their commander over here. And I'm kind of curious, I mean, the thing is, Anakin and Lowry just played an hour and a half, or not an hour, like an hour and ten minutes worth of game, one of which was 45 minutes long. Actually, it's pretty close to an hour and a half of game, actually. <laughs> One of which was, like, almost 50 minutes long. And I'm not sure how they're feeling right now. And it takes a lot of endurance to actually pull that off. So I don't know how they're feeling. I don't know if they're going to have some fatigue as a result of that. 
it'll be interesting to see how they fare. But anyway, Laudi and Anarchid are starting to fall behind a bit slightly, actually. They're not expanding as much. Google Frog is being pretty aggressive, actually, seeing a dirtbag over here in the northwest side. That's kind of an aggressive tactic, but also Google Frog just not really focused too much on what's going on here. Like, Google Frog expanding over here, not really, if he's focused up here, that's where they're really focused. Not really expanding as much here, but it doesn't really matter because overall, Akronim and Goofrog have expanded a lot more than Lowry and Anarchid. And Lowry and Anarchid being much more forward with their expansions and losing them as a result. They're further back on metal, so this is starting to become a bit of an issue. Though Scythe coming in from Anarchid, that is a big deal. Anarchid going for Glaive Scythe, basically the same thing that won last time was just continuous Scythe. Now, this is only one Scythe at a time, not the four Scythe we saw in Bandit Plains. And this one's also gone to get itself killed. Because why don't you? Why not get yourself killed? That's apparently a thing. Yeah, scythes, scythes do best when they're alive. Yeah, they... That's the thing. Yeah. So anyway, with... Bandits coming in here. Actually, nice harassment by Lowry. Taking out some of Google Frog's metal. And apparently some of the energy as well. Like Google Frog running low on metal. No, never mind. It just didn't have a lot of energy to begin with. Yeah, Google Frog is running low on metal and still expanding forward. The side expansion here taken out very effectively. Bandits going off to the side. And other than that, not much more to be said about that. That was a clean kill. Lowry got in and now the economy advantage has reversed. So it's remained fairly even. Although Lowry, Anarchid, they're taking the center area. They're taking this top hill. This hill over to the east side is being taken by Google Frog, but the western hill is being taken by Anarchid not convincingly. Not totally convincingly. They have a decent position on it, but I don't think that it's impervious. Certainly doesn't look that way. However, rogues coming in from the bottom. There are, well, switching over, getting it kind of out of Raider Phase. Still, still solidly in Raider Phase, but starting to, you can see Akron starting to get a little bit antsy, not quite sure whether it should stay in Raider Phase or not. Google Frog, however, Pretty confidently leaving Raider phase. Google Frog going entirely for Ravager. Has some levelers as well. Google Frog's out of Raider phase. Akram's getting Outlaws as well. Yeah, they are not focusing on Raiders. And Anarchy is also transitioned. So all the players are pretty much transitioned out of Raider phase, which kind of makes sense. We're at the point where the map is relatively evenly distributed. But Google Frog and Akram are behind. They're getting ahead in energy. These wind generators are doing a very nice job. This is 2.3 to 2.5. So these are extremely valuable wind generators. Which also means they're great targets. But not much has been set up to overdrive yet. These are two metal or 1.9 metal expansions. They're 1.9 metal metal spots. So with this much power, that will probably be fairly effective for overdrive. How much power is this anyway? Yeah, that, that would easily double. Like that's going to easily double the amount of metal being built out of here. And also nicely getting rid of the area to the west so Anarchid can take that. Expanding over to the south side and yeah, now, at this point, Google Frog now retaking the southeast as well. But it's not... It's still not enough. I mean, Anakin and Lowry are ahead, and Akron's commander getting attacked. Not the biggest deal. These glaives will not kill it. But they are spotting out. They are dealing some damage. Getting down to 60% health. No follow-up force. No air coming in, though. No air... Oh, I say that right as Lowry builds a gunship plant. That is about the timing you'd expect for air switch. Like, five to seven minutes or so. And that's exactly what we see, although a little bit on the late side, but still, that's about right. And Goovrog very intent on defending this area. Got a Stardust up, getting Defenders up, getting Lotuses up. While at the same time, Anarchid and Lowry just holding up that hill here and holding this area up as well. Just, or holding it up, I should say. They're getting everything set up for defenses. They are consolidating. But it looks like they are also trying to get into possibly Brawler, possibly Black Dawn. Not quite sure what they're going for at this stage. The gunship plant is not queued for anything yet. And Lowry's commander dangerously forward. We do have the Ravagers that are coming in and the bandits coming in. Lowry, they'll probably pay attention to this. They'll probably notice this is happening and they need to move back. They're not going to be too worried until the defenders get knocked down, but they are starting to get knocked down. And the commander getting out of there does have a light particle beam. But it is out. The more important thing, it's out of there. It has left, and Lowry has their gunship plant up, but nothing queued to build on it. And still actually kind of going for more raidery units. Rogue and... Rogue and Bandit, that's about it. While Anakin, on the other hand, has shifted over pretty solidly to late game stuff. Zeus and Sharpshooter. 
That is very much a mid-late game arm. Well, that's a that's the highest tech of cloaking bot factory. That's what you do when you're pretty secure in your economy and need to escalate. That's what you escalate too. But Lowry has well, let's continue to solidify this area in the center. Google, this area feels really vulnerable. Like far more than this, because the center is in the possession of team blue of blue team. While the red team does not have the possession in the center, so this area here feels like it's only protected by the defenses that are directly here. And cutting these off, that would destroy it. It feels a lot more vulnerable. Like if this pushed forward, this hill would be gone. Like if Lowry pushes forward, I mean. But at the same time, there was the brawler. That's what I was looking for. See the brawler. We see the Zeus coming in here. And Aquinas Commander taking a decent amount of damage, though. The Zeus will probably go down to the defenders, but still. That's a lot. That's some damage being dealt there. Aquinas Commander, Light Particle Beam, and Lazarus Device, and Nanolathe. Interesting. Light Resurrection Commander. Anarchist Commander, however, moving into a really bad spot. Riot Cannon. Okay, I can see that they're going to probably take care of the Defender Nest in one shot. Which will be very good to see. Well, not quite one shot, but very close to one shot. Anarchid is taking that out. Taking the entire Defender Nest out. And Aquinas Commander. Now, Aquinas Commander is very much threatened. In the center of the map as well, we do see some artillery starting to get thrown in. Wolverines. I think an Impaler as well. Yep, Impaler. Definitely built there. But Aquinas about to lose the Commander to a Zeus. And one more shot. Down it goes. That Zeus will also go down in the process. Still gets rid of the Commander. And... Aquinum now at half the economy. Like, Aquinum at the lowest economy by half, easily. Google Frog and Aquinum kind of behind. And they are... Like, Anakin and Lowry, blue team is pushing in very hard. And here the Brawler's coming in, tearing apart this hill. Google Frog buried themselves into a hole. But there's not much that can be done here. And like I said, this hill was pretty vulnerable to begin with. But at the same time, Google Frog going for a counterattack to the eastern side of the map. But these Ravagers' days are numbered. Once the Brawlers get to them, they're basically done. They're more concerned about getting rid of this expansion right off the bat. Possibly getting rid of the commander if they can. Google Frog losing a lot of economy as a result. They're going down from 24 to 18. Go down even further, losing anything. If they lose the commander, that drops down to 14. If they get raided in the back, that drops them down even further. But they are trying to get the center. They're actually taking out Lowry's commander. Lowry's commander goes down as well, but Lowry and Lowry's ahead. Lowry and Anarchid are ahead. So they're going to be fine right now, and Lowry moving in once again with more Brawlers. Taking care of these Ravagers, like I said, their days were numbered, and that was... This is when it's up. But it looks like even then, Razors are being set up. But Rogues just don't care about that. They're pushing through. Basically, there's enough ground forces that it doesn't really matter. Although, oh, Anakin loses their commander as well. So Anakin and Lowry have both lost their commanders, and they're still economically ahead. While Google Frog has their commander, but economically behind. Akron lost their commander, economically behind. So with some reclaim potential. And the Sharpshooter, also a good choice because of the shield boss. I mean, a Felon comes in, Sharpshooter counters it. Felon doesn't come in, Sharpshooter still deals quite a bit of damage. Getting rid of thugs and such. Getting rid of shield units without too much issue. Yeah, Anarchid and Lowry are ahead economically. They're... Not quite pulling ahead militarily yet. Google Frog actually does have a military advantage. But a lot of that is anti-air. Admittedly, a lot of the military that that Lowry has is air, but then Lowry also has the weaker military. Anarchy, on the other hand, mostly focused on the sharpshooters. That's really their main force. And trying to push in an Aquinum. And Anarchy going for an air switch. Aquinum as well for an air switch. Both players nearly simultaneously... No, sorry. Anarchy has their air factory already. Aquinum's going for the air switch. Aquinum's got that air switch very nearly started. <laughs> it's just started. It ha it's not even close to being done. And Aquinum losing their main... Pretty much about to lose the main base. I don't think they're quite going to lose it. No, they're going to lose it. The Racketeer doing a valiant job trying to stop the Zeus from getting in. But really, the Sharpshooter, once he gets a shot in, gets rid of the Racketeer. Nicely done, and that's pretty much it. Google Frog doing a good job trying to take the center out. I'm not sure if Aquinum's going to just surrender and try to give Google Frog Aquinum stuff just to see if they can stay in. But I kind of doubt it. Google Frog is, falling is not even doing much here. They are focusing on the center. They're focusing on getting back in here. They're losing their commander, though, pretty quick. I think they're meant to be focusing on thinking of what to do for match two, for game two. 
because game one is not going in their favor. That's for certain. Game two is... Well, it's going to be their pick if they lose this one. It's not completely lost yet, but if they do lose this one, it is their pick. The Impaler is doing a very good job of keeping these alive. We saw it. We did see in earlier games that Google Frog and Akron are really good at picking the right units and picking their engagements well. And they're good at defending when down, such that they can just keep themselves alive in order to get enough to actually build up. But I don't know if we're going to see that too much here. This game might be too far gone for even that to happen. Because the Bandit Plains game was considerably bigger. There's more room to defend, more room to move around. Trojan Hills is a considerably smaller map, which means it's a lot harder to get those comebacks going. And it looks like, yeah, we're seeing kind of a last-ditch effort from Google Frog and Aquadim. This is basically going to do it. I mean, Google Frog taking a lot of damage from here. A couple thugs, a couple outlaws trying to take out Google Frog's commander. Honestly, Google Frog's commander... Probably not the big of a deal. There is a lot of naked expansion that can be taken out. That can be destroyed. Most of the mobile units are gone. Google Frog basically focused primarily on their command. Is it really much of a focus? No, the commander's not that much of a focus. Google Frog, where is their military? I think it's all in Impalers. Yeah, these are 700 each. So yeah, their, their military cost is mostly Impalers. Acronym is basically nothing left. They have air forces now, but it's not saying much. And Anarchid hasn't actually built anything out of the airplane plant. They have the Valkyries for transport for the sharpshooters, and that's about it. And Thugs and Outlaws, are they going to do it? I don't know. I think they... Yep, there they go. Last shot going to do it. Google Frog loses their commander, and that pretty much seals it. Anarchid and Lowry just have the economic advantage. All the commanders are down. I mean, whatever advantage the commander might have given is completely gone for Google Frog. Territory is in Agnarkid and Lowry's favor. Aquinum doesn't really have much to go off of, so yeah, just... Just does that in. It looks like we are going to see... Yeah, more Valkyries coming in, more Sharpshooter drops. It has pointing out, no Roach drops, nothing nothing fancy like that, just Sharpshooter drops. But yeah, once I think this area goes down. If this air factory is destroyed, that'll basically do them in. Uh, that'll basically be that'll be game two. I'll be Anarchid Lowry taking it, but at this point, mainly it's just this shield ball. Shield ball coming in, and now it's getting to the naked expansions. Now it's getting to the stuff that Google Frog cannot do anything to de deal with. This is the last ditch effort here. They're trying to get rid of everything, trying to get rid of the transfer, trying to get rid of the Zeus. The sharpshooter down and cloaked, able to get some free shots off once it managed to get out of the way. Doesn't want to get revealed, of course. And it's going to get revealed. Gets too close to the Ravagers, gets revealed. Gets taken out. And at the same time, though, the shield ball is coming in. Taking a fair amount of damage. But the felon does manage to get rid of everything here. And at this point, this area is naked. Google Frog has no defenses down here. Alcanum is about to lose this area, too. There's really not much to be said here. Besides that, it's just a matter of time. Like, Akron, Anarchid and Lowry have such a massive economic advantage. They have easily a four times economic advantage. It's just a matter of how long it takes for their units to plot in. And it's really not that long. There's the Felon Ball right here. That'll pretty much solidify it. And at the same time, yeah, that's it. That's it. Google Frog and Aquadim call GG. So that is game one. Going to Anarchid and Lowry. So well done to them. And yeah, it was kind of interesting. I mean, it was definitely a match. Lowry and Anarchid. They were actually slightly behind at the start, but yeah, that gunship switch really solidified. At the start, it was pretty even. They are pretty much neck and neck, but that gunship switch that took out this hill, because this hill was hugely important. Once Google Frog lost that, and the center as well, that was taken up pretty effectively. That was taken very effectively by Blue Team. Once that was lost, it was just game. It was a slow burn, but yet very difficult to pull back from that. And actually, even just losing this metal extractor early on, losing these metal extractors was a big deal. That was a blow. That was a blow that I'm sure Google Frog would rather have not had taken. Because, like I said, they were at the economic advantage at the start. Google Frog and Aquaman had like a 6 medal advantage each. So it was 12 medals total on Anakin and Lowry. And that was completely flipped over. And then from there, Anakin and Lowry just managed to get the right shots, kill the right things, and win the game. So we're just going to get... Aquanim and Google Frog to choose the next map, which will probably be Comic Catcher because Google Frog likes that map. We'll see though, maybe not. Maybe it'll be something also tricky. Maybe it'll be in Colta once again. I don't know. 
But we will see when that happens. Oh, Tartarus! What? Okay, well, we're seeing Tartarus. I have not seen this map played out on a 2v2. I guess Google Frog and Akron just figured they can ch out cheese Anakin and Lowry. And that's probably true. They have shown they are very skilled at the cheese. Whether or not they actually pulled that off effectively, though, we will find out once that gets going. Because that is what's going to be starting up. It should be starting up in just a moment now. I mean, we have seen from the last tournaments, Akron and the Google Frog do enjoy doing their gunship cheese. I like doing gunship, they like doing... They like doing this stuff, but... Whether or not they actually pull it off, we'll see, because I'm sure Anakin and Lowry are... Exp yeah, Anakin and Lowry are probably expecting this. They're probably expecting that this is going to be set up with cheese. I mean, they're going for Tartarus, which means that they're probably going to be trying to take the corners, and they're probably going to be going for an early gunship, possibly gunship shield. Possibly going for an early warrior drop, That that could be a thing too. And try to go for just a quick warrior drop while sending units off to the sides to build up. And dropping some conjurers off to the corners, dropping warriors into the opponent's base. Or possibly spider drops as well, like a red back drop. You might see that. Seems plausible, but I'm not sure what we're going to see because I haven't I have no idea what they're going to build. So we are going to have that going and just get that started. So you started the, well, players are setting up. And I don't really see a whole lot here. I see, Anak see Lowry is, yeah, see Anakin and Lowry up by one. Google Frog and Aquanim. So Cloaky and Google Frog not going for anything. Interesting. So Aquanim normally is the one that goes for the air side of that. But no, they're actually going for more of a solid strategy. Cloaky and Spider. So Google Frog gonna be going over here to the southeast corner, most likely. Akin probably gonna try to take the lower section on the northwest side. Still high value mexes, just less defensible. Lowry and Anarchid not quite choosing what they're gonna go for. In this situation, it might be more their game to go for cheese. But Google Frog and Akin do would probably have a plan here. This is their counter pick. We'll see how it goes and Anakin one, go cloaky again. Lowry might go shields. Lowry might go spiders. We'll see. Yes, Kazi pointing out this is a total upset. Total upsets. Because right now, it, it, well, I don't know. I mean, Google Frog and Anakin have won more tournaments. That's true. Anakin and Lowry are individually stronger players than kind of the, like they're. It's kind of balanced out if you consider it by averages. But. There is a weak link of Aquanim, but Google Frog kind of makes up for it. And Lowry going for early air. On a map this size, that might be a problem. Well, like I said, spiders coming in. Google Frog just double checking to make sure that they have full knowledge of all the important corners. Fleas on each corner, one flea in the main base. While Glaze will stop one of the fleas. And that should prevent any knowledge of air coming in too early. Which is fairly important because on a map this size of air was known to be very easy to counter. However, the glaze coming in afterwards, that's going to be harder to stop from scouting. So it definitely delays that information. Or, well, it would if more that the Swift was going forward, so I guess delaying the information was never the goal. And another flea goes potentially down. Oh, dodges. Never mind. Does actually a pretty good job of avoiding that commander. And Anarchid trying to get around this hermit. Trying to actually should be able to get around the hermit without too much issue, but. Engaging is going to be difficult. It takes a lot of damage to kill. And it looks like that's not going to happen. But Lowry is going south as well. And it, Lowry is going to find these glaives. Or Lowry's commander is going to find these glaives. Lose quite a lot of its health in the process. 1500 health. I mean, remember, Recon counts is 1600 health right at the start. So 500 damage is a pretty big deal. But support forces are coming in to deal with that. And at this point, everything's still fairly even. But a Raven has come up. And anti air is nowhere to be found. Actually, never mind. Gremlin is being built up. Akinem getting has one. Two gremlins. No, sorry. One gremlin so far. No, two gremlins. What am I saying? There are two gremlins. Where's the second gremlin? Okay, that's... That's strange. I see two... Oh, that's... Well, anyway. Oh, I see. That's that's why. Because one of them is Anarchids. So, yes. There are the gremlins there. Although, the gremlin for Anarchid is 
purely a scouting gremlin that's being masked in. The glaives are masking the gremlin here coming in here, so that is... That is just a ruse. That gremlin is not for anti-air. But does get rid of one of the medley strategies, which is nice to see. Yeah, the <laughs> Anarchid pointing out this area is pretty defended. The glaive is coming in here. I mean, sorry, the glaive. The gremlin coming in here does manage to see what's going on. She puts up in a good position to avoid getting detected while still being able to see everything, and that's kind of what it has. This isn't a bad position. It does see the spider bot factory, what it's producing. It doesn't really see what Cloaky is producing, but it does see spiders. And Anakin at this point. Anakin and Lowry are still taking the corners actually pretty quickly. Despite the fact that they can't take the top corners, the really defensible sections, they are still taking the corners. And of course, Terraform can make up for that. You can't just terraform this away. Nothing wrong with that. Or jump it away, actually, that's true. Lowry. I'm not talking to anybody. I don't know why I'm talking like I'm having a co-commentator right now. But... Oh, okay. Oh, sorry, they're talking about Evolution RTS Tournament. And... With... The Glaives coming in here, these Hermits are really too much. The Rockos are gonna do fine. I mean, Rockos are pretty much a counter to the Spider Factory, but the Glaives not so much. However, at this point, the Northwest... I mean, the Raven being spotted up by the flea, not that it really matters a great deal. Nothing... It doesn't look like anything's going to be moving down. No, nothing is moving to deal with the Raven. As if the Raven were coming in from the northwest side of the map. The Raven's just scouting out. It just wants to know what's there. And these Hermits are taking a decent amount of damage. But they are tanking a lot of damage. 1400 health, quite a lot at this stage in the game. Takes a lot to get through that. But more Ravens are forthcoming. A second Raven is being built... And overall, another Conjurer is being built as well. Conjurers and Rockos. While well, Akronim also switching to Rockos, getting a few Gremlins as well. Just sending them up just in case they get a hit. And Nice coming in with the Glaives. Takes out one of the Glaives with the Raven. Not the best use of a Raven, but hey, it does work. Does kill him. While the rest of the Glaives going to the southeast side of the map. And they look to be trying to intercept here. I think they're trying to expecting something coming from Google Frog. Just want to be on their toes. Want to be prepared just in case Google Frog does something. At this point, Anakin and Lowry have a bit less territory to their name. Like, this area here is pretty safe, but the northwest, no one really has. And the center, it does kind of look like they have a bit less territory, but it might be even. In fact, you know what? No, it looks like they're actually slightly ahead. So, it's it's really close to call at this point. It's going to come down to a big battle. Like, a moderately large battle. And that's not happening yet. Neither player is too confident about committing to it. There is still one Raven up. In fact, it looks like one of the Ravens got killed. That does pose a bit of a problem. And cranes are coming up as well. And Anakin's going to be sending this crane... Sorry, Lowry's going to send the crane over here to the northwest side of the map. As one would expect. That's pretty typical. And an attack is happening. Anakin confident they can deal with the forces that have been built so far. And I'd say that their, their confidence is well placed. The Hermits are actually out of position getting hit by the defenders... The Rockers over can't do much against that. Lowry, Lowry's commander is in a pretty bad spot, though. That's one problem. Lowry's commander does have heavy machine gun, which is good, but needs to be really careful about their positioning here. Because the Rockers are getting swarmed by Glaives, which is not doing them any favors. And Lowry's commander just pulling back. That jump will not save it. The, the Hermits can follow, but they aren't choosing to. They're instead going around the side. And still managed to get rid of a few of the Hermits. In fact, I think, yeah, both these Hermits are going to go down. So one Hermit is left, and that area was fairly well defended. Not perfectly defended, though, but the Crane now building up to the north. And the Flea just pushing it away. Trying to get the Defender up in time before it goes down. And that's not going to happen. That Crane is going to go down first. That is unfortunate for the Crane. Because that was, that was important. That needed to be built. Like, Lowry wanted to have that built. They really needed to have that built. And they didn't manage to have it built. And at this point, Lowry, they're kind of donating to Anarchy with the excess. But frankly, just... They need to get this set up. They need to start building more units. They can. And they are building a crane. So that's good. They're building another crane. And they are getting more Rockos here. So that at least... Oh, sorry. Anarchy getting more Rockos here. But it's not the best position. The Lotus has been built up. Google Frog's commander is defending this nicely. So, at this point, it's still kind of no man's land. Neither player really managing to push through. But Google Frog and Aquanim do have a slight military advantage, especially against Lowry. Anarchid's ahead, 
But Lowry, not so much. Lowry has not been building much. Lowry does have this crane, but it's not helping. I mean, it built this. One of the cranes built this. But overall, it's not helping too much. Guvrog and Aquadim are behind economically, though. And they're building a lot of defenses. Although, surprisingly, by cost, not that many, but still, they are building a lot of defenses, as Google Frog is wont to do. Aquadim, not really known to do that, but definitely a thing that can be done. And more Glaives just coming in from Aquanim, trying to tear apart everything that Lowry and Anna could have. But with Rockos, that's a good choice. The Glaives, not so much. And down goes another Swift. These defenders are doing a wonderful job. And Anakin and Lowry, and there we go. Now Lowry is starting to set the crane up for reclaim. Sorry, reclaim for for pushing in stuff. Switching over to a jump bot factory. So I had to take that switch and oh yeah, right. This spills at four metal seconds, so it takes over two minutes. It takes two minutes for a commander. It takes more than that for it takes sorry a minute for a commander. Two minutes for most workers. Well over two minutes for a crane. So yeah, helping out with the caretaker to get that jump bot factory up as soon as possible. Pushing it out while sharpshooters come in. This might I think this is a little early for sharpshooters. Sharpshooters are They're definitely good anti-heavy, but it's not a whole lot of heavy units being built up by either player. By either of Red Team's players. Although, actually I say that and then a crab is actually a minute away from completion, so I'm wrong. I'm actually very wrong. That's not true at all. And Anarchy at the same time is pushing out. I think they have 4k metal worth of units. Compared to about, yeah, so the total army value is about the same. The type counter, however, is in Red Team's favor, I think, at this point, the Glaives. But a ramp being built up by Anakin's Commander, like I said, you can do this. You can just terraform it up. Because, why not? That's the thing the game allows, and it does work in this case. But yeah, a lot of Anakin's army value is this particular sharpshooter. The warrior covering it, warrior screening for it, which is good to see. But yeah, that sharpshooter not doing too much in the moment. Not hitting the right target. The right target is under construction, though. That will still take about three shots, unarmored. But it'll work. Or at least it should work fairly well. And now, Anarchid's commander over to the northwest side of the map just to get even bigger economic advantage. Because the economic advantage is already fairly big. A lot of that has to do with reclaim. But some of that... Some of that has to do with just the fact that they have more metal spots. That's simple as that. Now, if we look over here, it looks like, yeah, the crab's done, and Goofrog not really building much at the moment. Not building much out of the factory, at least. And the north, the southeast has been taken over by Lowry. Lowry's commander over to the southeast, Anarchist commander over to the northwest. Actually, Anarchist commander just cleared that out, so Lowry's crane can take the northwest. And Lowry, now getting some jump bots, has some pyros up, has some freakers up. And... Yeah, it looks like... And actually, no, I only get Grumman Finals if it takes too long. This is actually okay. But anyway, this is actually pretty fun. This has been a really good game so far. So despite the fact that I have had issues with getting pissed off about some of the games in previous tournaments, these games have been really entertaining. Even the long 40-minute games, those actually... I mean, the first one escalated a little bit slowly, but the second one, that was wonderfully done. So yeah, so that is one thing about Twitch. Like, Hitbox, I will point out, Hitbox does not have the best recording setup compared to Twitch. That is one of the big advantages of Twitch. It does have much better recordings. So anyway, I sounds like Hitbox is the way to go. That's that's good to know. I was, it was really up down to this tournament how well it would go. Anyway, probably get back to the game. So as you can see, Aquanim trying to harass. Should be able to no, won't be able to take this out because they can't get to the ramp. The ramp is too well defended. There's the Lotus in the way. While Lowry, on the other hand, looks like they're taken out with the... They're taken out with the Ravens. And while the Stardust is in the high ground, not going to do much, and the Pyro's coming in, getting rid of Google Frog's commander. That is huge. That is a third of the economy right there. Google Frog down another four metal. I mean, they're already down. This is by half. Like, Google Frog and Aquadim have half the metal of Anarchy and Lowry. The Crab is still up, though. The Crab is still a big deal. The Sharpshooter should be able to get rid of that. But unfortunately, attacked while it was defended. So that crab was moving while the attacks happened. I mean, different story. That's not happening. And this sharpshooter not moving. That sharpshooter is pretty much doomed. Yep, it's been spotted out. Sharpshooter can only be saved if the units trying to kill it are themselves killed first. And I don't know if this is going to happen. It looks like it might very well. This this hermit is the real deciding factor. And I don't think that's... Well, actually, no, it will. That will go down thanks to the raven. 
does manage to take that out. But yeah, the investment in sharpshooters is not really paying off all that well. The warriors are paying off decently well, and the pyros are paying off decently well. That's the one thing. The pyros are screening for the warriors. They are getting rid of the raiders coming in. But that's the only thing that's really doing so. Well, the crab, on the other hand, going over to the west side of the map, trying to get rid of Anarchist Commander, trying to get rid of everything built up so far. And on the other hand, this is just... This is a decent force if it can work. Like I said, get rid of the crab. It's great. For anything else, it's kind of meh. It's not It's not particularly effective. And even the Zeus, like, the Zeus will take two shots from a sharpshooter. Just to go down. I mean, admittedly, it'll be two shots that are basically free, but still, it takes two shots. And now these Rockos, this is this is where the Glaives come in. But at this point, Anarchid and Google Frog, they are just building... Google Frog going straight for Fleas, Anarchid going straight for Glaives. They're just trying to completely overwhelm with Raiders, while Lowry and Anarchid... I'm going to say Google Frog and Aquinim. Lowry and Anarchid are going much more for heavier units. And that... What the... Oh, crab went down. Okay. I, so that... That is the crab down. And at this point, Anakin and Lowry still have their commanders. Lowry's is over here, Anakin's is over here. Goofrog lost their commander, and Aquim's is over here. So it's still not that big of a deal. But yeah, the sharpshooters are in a pretty good spot. Four sharpshooters right now. One of them has been revealed. Well, actually, it's not revealed. It's that Anakin's starting to run out of energy, actually. Anik has got to be a bit more careful about their energy and needs to build a few more power plants. Actually, where are Anarchid's power plants? Yeah, Anarchid. Anarchid needs more power plants. It's mainly just a reclaim thing. It looks like without reclaim, they're fine. With reclaim, it's a little bit iffy. But it doesn't even matter. They're actually doing effectively against Glaives. The sheer number of sharpshooters there are. Although, yeah, that looks like... It does look like the energy is becoming too much of a burden. They're having to decloak. But it also looks like more power plants are being built for 35 energy right now, so it's not that big of a deal. The sharpshooters, as long as they're not too far up front, it's not going to be their death if they are decloaked. It just it is still a concern, though. You have to be careful about that. You don't want them to be decloaked too easily. You don't want them to be decloaked when their support units are around. You don't want them to be decloaked when they're the only things there. But right now, they're not the only things there. They're pyros and warriors that are screening for them. Moderators as well for skirmishing. And Google Frog, while they do have some stuff over to the east side of the map, not much. They have fleas. That's pretty much all they have set up there. They have fleas set up to the east side of the map. There are a couple glaives set up. Sorry, a couple gremlins set up as well. Glaives are over here with some Rockos and hammers. As was pointed out earlier, is a typical thing for Google Frog in the later game is the hammers. Google Frog enjoys dropping those hammers. And they are. They're probably not going to do too well, actually. They're going to get spotted by the sharpshooters. They're going to be going down in one shot. Yeah, hammers, 350 health. It's not even... You don't even have to get the sharpshooters there. Just the pyros getting close enough will tear them apart. It's kind of hard to hold hammers, hold artillery, when you don't have a whole lot of support forces up front. That is a difficult thing to do. But it looks like Anarchid is going to... Well, going to have it work pretty well, just even this... At the northwest side, they have more energy. Their sharpshooters are going to continue to cloak properly. And it looks like they have some overdrive on top of that. Or maybe a little bit. Not a whole lot. But it doesn't really matter because they have the economic advantage. They have the military advantage. And I think... I think they're going to take this game. Another crab is coming up. But getting a factory search right now for either... Google... No, Google Frog and Akronim throwing the towel. That is game. That is match. Bronze match goes to Anarchid and Lowry 2-0. We'll now move on to the finals, and that will be, as mentioned before, Norm and Flipstip versus Skazi and Black Duchy. So well done to Anakin Lowry getting third place. Really kind of surprising, but yeah, that... Oh, it was a scuttle. That's what, okay, so that's what it was over here when I was wondering what blew up... What blew up the crab? What created the explosion? It's the scuttle. I'm sorry, I forget about that unit because it's not used a whole lot. But when it's used, it's used effectively, I find. So anyway, we're going to be moving on to the finals. Once we get the players in, we need to get a glass of water. So I'll be back in just a moment. Stay tuned, everyone. I'll be back for the finals. See if Sackdoth is feeling better. <laughs> 